Chernobyl, the worst nuclear accident to date. The zone is still radioactive, with the remnants of Pripyat still standing, frozen in time ever since that fateful day in 1986. Today, we're discussing the creepiest areas, mutated animals, a winged harbinger of death, and more. I'm your host, James, and these are the top 10 dark things found in Chernobyl too scary for scientists. And we're starting off with the abandoned amusement park. It kind of wasn't even abandoned, to be honest. It was set to open just days after the disaster, so it was never actually used. The rusted Ferris wheel and desolate bumper cars still stand, though. It's definitely eerie, but somber, too. An area frozen in time, a reminder of what could have been. The park meant to be a source of entertainment for the residents of Pripyat and the workers of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant now stands as a testament to the sudden and irreversible changes brought about by the events of that fateful day. The centerpiece of the park is the rusted Ferris wheel, which was meant to offer a nice panoramic view of the city and surrounding it are the remains of bumper cars, a once colorful carousel and the the other amusement rides, all now deteriorating and covered in a layer of rust. And instead of the screams of happy visitors, there's just an eerie silence. Empty benches and picnic tables where families were meant to gather, completely desolate. Nature slowly reclaiming its territory as overgrown pathways and cracked the pavement, creating this sad, kind of post-apocalyptic ambience. If you are enjoying our channel, by the way, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We got videos coming at you on the daily. Number nine, the reactor control room. So deep within the bowels of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the reactor four control room still stands, a relic frozen in time. This once bustling control center was the nerve center where decisions and actions were taken on that night in 1986. It's said that as you step into the room, the air is heavy, the dust-covered dials and cracked screens are a reminder of the frantic attempts to bring the situation under control. The red radiation warning lights, frozen at levels that spell out the magnitude of the disaster. In the dim light, you can almost imagine the hum of machinery, the hurried footsteps, the urgent conversations that once filled the room, a complete contrast to the lifeless, ghostly atmosphere that it has now. Pripyat Hospital. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why the place is unsettling. Hospitals are depressing. Even when fully open and operational, abandoned hospitals are that. Plus, they have the creep factor of being empty and abandoned. So an abandoned hospital in the middle of a radioactive death zone? That's pretty much the apex of nightmarish hospitals right there. Looking at images of this place online, it looks like the real-life Silent Hill or something. Chipped paint, rusted beds, the building is literally falling apart and decaying. Really uh, oozes with ambience, just not the kind of ambience you want to sit back and uh, relax in. And at number seven, we have the Black Bird of Chernobyl. In the months preceding the catastrophic events of April 26th, 1986, residents near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant reported encountering a grotesque creature, a mutated figure with gigantic wings and deep red eyes. Nightmares and direct confrontations with this winged anomaly, later dubbed the Black Bird of Chernobyl, haunted a number of residents of the area and then there was the devastating explosion of Reactor 4 at 1.23 a.m. The ensuing fire and nuclear meltdown led to the evacuation of over 336,000 people. And the story goes that several survivors of this incident were counted witnessing a colossal blackbird with a 20-foot wingspan soaring through the sky. Even if you've never heard of this particular part of the Chernobyl lore, this story probably sounds kind of familiar. It's very similar to the Mothman sightings in West Virginia right before the Silver Bridge collapse in 1968. 
The physical description of the creature is similar, and the fact that these creatures were reported appearing right before disasters. Both the Blackbird of Chernobyl and the Mothman vanished after each of these catastrophes. So you can't help but wonder if these ominous creatures are bound to disaster, omens that materialize in the shadows preceding total destruction. Next on the list is the notorious Red Forest. So the Red Forest, named for the eerie reddish color assumed by the pine trees following the radioactive fallout, is a symbol of the environmental impact of the Chernobyl disaster. This dense woodland located near the nuclear power plant absorbed a significant amount of radioactive particles, resulting in the death of its vibrant flora. As you step into the Red Forest, the silence is apparently palpable. The once lush trees, now lifeless and devoid of foliage, stand as a testament to the irreversible consequences of the nuclear fallout. Scientists did uh, this really interesting experiment here too to see how messed up things really were. They filled bags with leaves from clean spots and left them in both normal and messed up areas. So surprise, surprise, leaves in the messed up spots didn't break down much, holding on to about 60% of their weight. This means the radiation messed with the nature's ability to decompose and replenish itself in the area. The leaves stayed dry and intact for almost a year. Sounds harmless, but dry leaves in a place that's prone to forest fires, it's a ticking time bomb. If a fire breaks out, it could spread radioactive stuff beyond the no-go zone. So not only is the radiation messing with the forest's ability to bounce back, but now there's a legit risk of radioactive fire spreading trouble even farther. And at our number five spot, we have the piles of gas masks. So famously, there's one specific room in one of the schools in Pripyat where the floor is filled with gas masks. Looters had come in and taken the small amounts of silver in the mask filters. Uh, the presence of gas masks is obviously not a good sign. Doesn't make for a very happy sight. Looks more like the apocalypse hit, which is probably what it felt like for the residents of the city that day, especially the youngsters. They must have been scared out of their minds. What's also odd is that these gas masks weren't used. You'd think they would have been. Apparently just a week before the incident, students were trained on how to use them in case of an emergency. But after the incident took place and everyone was being evacuated, people were instructed not to use the masks because the Communist Party leadership thought the use of them would cause people to panic. Basically, they wanted to save face and not blow the issue out of proportion. You know, the worst nuclear disaster in history. Next up, we have the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone sign. Uh, this sign is straightforward, yet crucial. Placed in the boundaries of the zone, it's a worn out marker, weathered by time, warning anyone who approaches. The sign features the distinct trefoil radiation symbol, an unmistakable sign of the danger that lies beyond, marking the edge between safety and risk. The sign is surrounded by rusted gates and crumbling walls, signifying the transition from the familiar to the forbidden, signaling the presence of invisible threats from the nuclear catastrophe that took place back in 86. The Exclusion Zone sign is a tangible reminder that the invisible dangers of radiation are still very much present. It marks a boundary that, if crossed without caution, could lead to exposure to radioactive contaminants. It's a no-nonsense marker in a place where the consequences of nuclear disaster are still very real. But people jump over all the time, apparently, like graffiti and stuff inside the area. That wouldn't do it personally, but hey, live your lives. Next on the list are the Chernobyl Pripyat River boats. Eerie as hell. So these boats were once the lifeblood of Pripyat, but when the reactor went kaboom in 86, everything changed. The whole area got evacuated, leaving these boats stranded and forgotten. Rusted metal, broken windows, and a thick layer of dust. These boats haven't moved in decades, just sitting there like ghost ships on a stagnant river. Nature's creeping in, moss, weeds, and who knows what else. The radiation factor amps up the creepiness. These boats were exposed to the fallout, soaking it up like a sponge. No creaking of the boat against the dock, no hum of engines, just eerie stillness. Then there's the knowledge that Pripyat was a lively place once. Families lived there, kids played by the river. Now it's just a desolate wasteland. Number two, the dolls. Within the deserted kindergarten of Pripyat, the floor 
is scattered with the haunting remnants of childhood abandoned dolls left behind by evacuated youngsters. Their lifeless eyes stare into the emptiness of a room that once echoed with laughter and play. The dolls, which are now weathered and disheveled, sit frozen in time. Some left in the exact same places where they were left in the middle of play all those years back. And what makes the presence of these dolls so somber is that the residents were told that the evacuation was going to be temporary. So in this abrupt evacuation, children left these toys behind thinking they'd be back soon to get them. But of course, as we all know, they never returned. One of the saddest displays is a set of four dolls positioned for a tea party left sitting in place ever since that fateful day in 86. And we gotta finish things off with all the icky animal mutations. Now, this is actually true. This is not in the realm of cryptozoology. There have been animals found within the area that have some unusual mutations. You have rodents with peculiar physical deformities, ranging from extra limbs to abnormal growths. In some cases, the effects extend to changes in the color of their fur. Birds have also shown signs of the radiation's influence. Some have beak malformations, and even their mating practices have been shown to be off. And you can only imagine how messed up some of the fish are in the Pripyat River. Fish have abnormalities like altered spinal structures and asymmetrical body growth because they're living in radioactive water. What's kind of interesting though is that, you know, sure there are a bunch of mutations, but the exclusion zone has kind of become a haven for some wildlife because th there's no human interference or at least very, very little. So some species have thrived in this absence of human activity. Nature is incredibly resilient. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.